Hey guys, SD here. One last thing I want to show off before I completely end this series and go back to creating art is micro detail. So a majority of the MK11 models, not even majority, all of them use micro detail from diffuse micros and normal micros. And to set them up, basically, you know, it's pretty easy. First, you want to go into where your textures are, actually. Let me find Sonya. Sonya example, there you go. Uh, textures, A. And go to the ID texture. Wait for that to load up, of course. And you're gonna have to use the red channel for this. Now you have this here. Now you need to know what micro detail maps does this specific skin use. Well, you go back to where you extracted your files, go to this material.txt folder, and just look up the skin name till you find. The hold on, I forgot what it's called specifically, but you know, you'll see. Let's keep going down and going down and going down. Right, should be right here. No, right, there's uh, two different skins. Okay, yeah, after this should be down here. Right. The arrays. These are all the micro normals. So Sonya here is using wool, ripstop, silk, burlap, leather, metal, rubber, more burlap, and more leather. Pass through are basically overrides. So According to this, this is how much, no, this is the map that's used for these micro maps, all right here. So the first pass through would be where the skin is actually, so over here, let me go ahead and select that to show it off, over here, this would be pass through, and then the next area would be wool, I'm pretty sure, yeah, wool 06, this goes here. So what I usually do is I basically set up black and white colors first and select this, add a layer mask, transfer layers, alpha channel, and just remove things by making the layer mask black because obviously I'm not using that. So I go ahead and go to select none select this part now this is where the wool is going to be so I do select invert make this black okay select invert again make it white okay so now I actually forgot to do one thing I gotta select the outside of this and make the whole thing black on the texture itself so when I delete this layer mask, this should be what's left. Now I should export and call this sun skin A, what was it? Wool mask. Okay, export that. Let me see which texture wool 06 is what she uses. So let me go ahead into my material library folder down here, textures, make another convert file, and I'm going to take two, micronormal silk and wool 06. I'm not going to show off every single one, it would take too long, so I'm going to take the silk micros and the wool 06 micros down here, 
You don't need to use every single one of them. I'm only going to use two for each. But I don't know which one is the highest resolution. So I'm just taking them all in. Over here. Uh, where are you? Right here. Okay. Over here. Convert. Batch process once again. DS. GA. Get my path back. Okay. Folder batch. Convert. Dunzo. Got that here. Put that back over here. So it merges in with this one. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to Blender. Select whatever part of the model. Doesn't really matter because it's only going to be mapped over here. Pull this out a bit because I'm just preparing myself for doing even more edits in the future. Take this down and check this out again. It's wool 06 bottom macro. Doesn't really matter which macro resolution you take because what matters really is that uh, you get the highest resolution actually. So you can really see the actual micro detail, you know. The micro, you're not supposed to really see it too well. Let me enable thumbnails so I can find out which was the highest resolution. It seems like this is not so much this, not so this. Yeah, this one. Okay. So that's non color. Get a UV map node and a mapping node. Vector. Mapping, put that here, put that here. Okay, set this to color mix RGB. This normal goes here, this normal goes here. Set that to overlay. And now to get the mask. Final texture skin A. Is our wool mask. Okay, now to put it right here. Nothing seems to be here so far. Let's change that to specular light. Now scale the normal map. There's our wool. It's beginning to show up now. Okay. Let's set that to 200, maybe 300. Yeah, 300 seems good enough. All right. I have to do a couple more things. You gotta overlay the roughness as well because the micro normals have their own roughness textures as well. Prime detail, you know. Okay. So now the roughness is attached to that. Now there's one more texture we gotta worry about as well. Like I said, there's micro normals and then there's micro albedos, albedos, diffuse textures, base textures, whatever you want to call them. Top micro, so wool. Top micro this right here set this to channel packed all right and now basically we're gonna have to multiply it with this base texture right here so let me get one of these again understand that's mapped to the same one too so same scales and all that so what I want to actually do is see uh, which texture I'm actually gonna use either the alpha or the diffuse so let me set this to diffuse color. Okay. Nothing in the alpha, right? Oh, there is. So let me see, like contrast, more contrast. Maybe over here. So there's nothing there, but there's a bunch here. Okay, I can use that then. Let's put this over here, this here, 
multiply it. Just multiply, multiply right here. Okay. You gotta reduce this intensity down a bit. Hold on, raise the brightness. Wait, let me see it for this one. I'm always like mixing and matching, see which one's actually right. Let me actually go ahead and try this one on for size. One, contrast, zero. small difference. Let me go back to this one. Set that back to the default values. Okay. Here's the contrast. Gotta make sure it isn't I think this should be fine, right? mask that oh, texture over here okay there's no alpha here so let's actually use this to why is it lightening up it's supposed to multiply let me invert interesting interesting okay Let's take this off again just to see the difference. Okay, now I think I finally got it. So, mask this, all right. Now there's both micro detail and micro normal applied. There we go. You can very visibly see it now. Let's say that I apparently thought this was too much. So let me raise it down. Both should manipulate themselves in a good enough fashion. No issues there. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it at a midline between 300 and 200, and let's keep it at 250. I think this is good enough now. Okay. And, okay, you don't necessarily need a mask all the time. Let's say you've got a independent part like silk or metal you can just go ahead and uh, do the same mapping method so let me just copy and paste all of these and get this to copy and drag this back paste all right let me get the silk now which one was it silk 01 Okay, it's really hard to see any differences really. These are really small details you wouldn't notice too well. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna have to use this one. Okay. Now same deal, same deal as usual. Map these onto these. This goes here. Roughness. Here. Normal here, a hundred percent. Okay. Ooh, what happened there? All oh, right. Yeah, my mistake. Pay attention to your nodes. You might get lost in them. Okay. Can't really see it too well. So let's scale that back a bit. Oh, you really can't see them at all, actually. Let me use the other silk ones that are somewhat more visible. It's really hard to tell, like, the difference. I think I can see the difference with this one. I mean, 
kind of? Not really. I see it now, mostly. I'm gonna set that to like 50. Okay. Right now to do the same thing. And this one, soak this out. Let's set this to non-color as well. Color mix and fuse color. Multiply. You don't want it multiplying that much, so let's raise this back to its defaults. Mm. Shouldn't brighten it too much, but eh, it's a minuscule difference, kind of. Yeah, it's good enough. All right. Now there's our silk. That's got micro detail, which you won't see too well because it's not as notable as this. But that's basically how you set them up. If you want even more micro detail, um, you can get very, very uh, complicated setups too. Nothing wrong with that, of course. The more detail, the better. But it's really good to have micro detail because of areas like this, you don't really see that fine detail. It looks pretty bad. But like over here, for example, you know, it really makes a difference because before it was pretty flat. Macro detail really adds like a lot overall to your models. One of my better setups with micro details has to be with this Scarlet skin. Um, you know, it's really hard to notice because there's a lot of black here. But if I were to zoom into this area, this is all micro letter detail. Now you can see the individual bumps of the letter over here. I think this is plastic micros. Kind of hard to tell, really. Every individual scratch is down here. Then over here is the same deal. It's a bunch of micro detail. It's a bunch of micro detail over here as well. It really makes it uh, pop out, especially when you do like high resolution renders, because if you don't have any micro detail, it kind of looks very, uh, how do I say this, soft overall. Like down by the velvet loincloth is all micro detail. If I were to go in her shader, you'd see I'd have a very complicated setup. It's a bunch of different normals mostly because the diffuse textures didn't really make that much of a difference. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show off. Um, I guess I'm kind of done with this series. If there's any questions, you know, feel free to ask me. I don't mind. I don't really get that many questions. So I hope someone learned something and uh, yeah, see you guys some other time. Oh, wait, I just want, just want to show off one thing. And there's micro detail over here, too. Yeah.